I can't remember his name, the guy who said that it wouldn't be the fighting game community if there wasn't sexual harassment. Right, I remember and that. Cross that, assault. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I want to write a paper which is um, not really for publishing, but more for, um, I suppose, what the university calls public outreach, which the point isn't to get stuffy academics to read it. The point is to get actual real people to read it, <laughs> be interested, you know, and highlight some issues. So I'm working on that, and I'll probably reference a lot of... Um, Dragon Age Origins, Anita Sarkeesian's work, um, and just some of the issues that have been coming up lately. Um, because it, it surprises me that they're still coming up. I mean, the, the most recent Alien game has no female Marines. <laughs> you know, women are overlooked. Lots of uh, um, groups are overlooked. So before anyone kind of is like, oh, other other people get overlooked too. I know, but but you have to kind of pick one thing to focus on. I will never get anything done. Right. <laughs> but um, that's kind of what I'm working on. Excellent. Okay, I'll be interested to, to hear your opinions on that, and hopefully I can persuade you and twist your arm to come join me for that. <laughs> Some other random stuff that I'm just curious about. Um, I've been reading, Jessica, on your blog, a lot about Dragon Age, and a little bit about Dark Horse Comics and Bioware being involved. I would say a Dragon Age comic. Can you tell us uh, more about that? I'm curious. Sure. Um, David Gator, uh, who's the lead writer for Dragon Age, he actually wrote some Dragon Age comics. The um, Dark Horse is such an amazing um, group. I, I've always been a big fan of them, even before I worked for Bioware. But um, they they reach out, and you know, a lot of companies they won't have the people who actually are involved in you know the game do their like novels and and uh, their comics, but for the most part we have um, our writers who are writing the comics who are working with um, the really great um, comic book writers and artists over at Dark Horse so um, David's um, first comic is going to be available at, at San Diego Comic-Con um, in hardback form that's what I've been waiting for so I'm going to have to fight the crowd to snatch up a copy for myself okay well that's exciting uh, a merger of two awesome things Definitely. <laughs> okay, let's move a bit into the DLC discussion. Um, some history uh, and some official company stances as well, probably here. On March 6, 2012, Mass Effect 3 was released to critical acclaim, and Andrew Rayner of Game Informer awarded it 10 out of 10 and asserted that Bioware has delivered one of the most intricately crafted stories in the history of the medium. It was rated the most anticipated game of 2012 and hit stores to over 3.5 million fans. And then I'm going to quote from Wikipedia. Uh, the objective source, we all know it is. <laughs> <laughs> the game's ending has been controversial with many longtime Bioware and Mass Effect fans. Criticisms include the lack of variation in the endings in view of the player's choices over the previous two games, as well as a general lack of closure, character inconsistencies, and plot holes. And displeased fans organized an internet campaign called Retake Mass Effect to demand a better ending to the game, part of which includes a charity drive, which I didn't realize, to Child's Play, which officially raised $80,000 in less than two weeks, ended up being shut down uh, Charles, Child's Play's request because there was some confusion among donors as to the purpose of the donations, and also claims that uh, Retake was unwilling to become associated with any other cause in that. But they did raise $1,000 in under one hour to go toward the purchase of 402 cupcakes, which were made of three different colors, red, green, and blue, to correspond to the different endings, and yet all had the same vanilla flavor. <laughs> Man. They were then sent to the Bioware's main office, who in turn donated all of them to a local charity. And one fan, Spike Murphy, went so far as to take his complaint to the Federal Trade Commission, and the agency was created to protect consumers, as we all know. His argument was that Bioware didn't deliver on the promise of the game. However, now with the release of the extended cut, he's happy with the end product. Uh, and there was acknowledgement from the CEO, Ray Mizuka, that uh, the company plan planned to address the endings and announcements made on the free DLC download for the extended cut. So. I guess to go back and kind of begin the discussion on this for those who might not know or just to catch us up to the point we are now with the release of the extended cut, um, Jessica, how did Bioware respond to all of this uh, craziness regarding the endings and what they would call the inconsistencies? Right. Um, so obviously this is something that um, was not, you know, a, a great 
feeling for a lot of the people at BioWare. Um, but we kind of all put our heads together. I um, got um, my own Twitter feed shut down a few times by Twitter for tweeting too many times at people in one hour. So don't tweet more than I think wow. it's like I think it's like if you tweet more than a thousand tweets in 24 hours, your account will like get temporarily um, <laughs> shut down because they assume you're a spammer. Wow. So I, I spent a lot of time talking with the community, um, gathering feedback. I got really good at Excel really fast <laughs> um, to compile all these things. And, um, you know, from coming from a big company, it is it is really easy to be skeptical of, um, you know, those people's um, motivations and, you know, what's going on behind the closed doors. So, um, you know, I can I can blather on for days about how Bioware really um, cared about the feedback and, and really wanted this to be a great experience for the fans. Um, ultimately, it's up to everyone to decide whether or not um, that's true for them. Um, but we we spent a lot of time, we had a lot of meetings about what people um, wanted to see, what what were the biggest issues um, and we decided that you know we split it up into several several camps of like um, of different kinds of consumers because obviously not everyone is the same there's um, even with a lot of like the the um, interpretations and theories that are going around there's you know tons of different iterations so we said okay who are the people that we think um, you know are our Bioware supporters but they feel really hurt in this or confused or they, they wanted more closure than we provided and so uh, we took the feedback that um, I gathered and that uh, Chris Priestley who's in charge of our forums gathered and a lot of the devs who kind of just you know would hang out in the forums but not say anything and um, we we put this together and said okay well what can we do for our fans and it was always important for us to make this available at no additional con cost to the um, the owners of Mass Effect 3 and um, we kind of uh, busted um, our I don't know the anyway we we busted something and uh, <laughs> worked worked for a few months on the extended cut and um, we worked right up until the last day to um, put it into certification and um, I think uh, a lot of us are still kind of recovering from that um, a, a bunch of people were supposed to take vacation and um, they were like no you know this is this is a really important thing that we need to do um, and. I'm really, really happy with the reception it's gotten. Um, okay. There was a lot of a lot of people who a few days before tweeted at me and at Bioware and Mass Effect, which those are um, all Twitter channels that I control. So pretty much when you're tweeting at Mass Effect or Bioware, you're tweeting at me. Um, a lot of people saying like, "Oh, are you going to be worried? Like, be prepared for another." Um, witch hunt, be prepared for people to get upset all over again. And I'm really happy with the feedback it got. Even people who weren't 100% pleased with it, um, they were really respectful. They were they they could see that there was a genuine effort to reconnect with our fans and do something that, because ultimately, if you're not appealing to your core consumers, um, you're losing out on the people who are the most loyal to you and when something like you know the Fox News sexism uh, Liara sex scandal came out like those are the same people who were the first people to defend Bioware so it's important that those are the, the people that you know we want to keep loyal and we want to make sure they're happy and taken care of very good I like that stance I would ask you personally uh, was there a lot of pressure on you as a community manager? Because fans obviously got very heated about this and very passionate about their shepherds. Did you have to spend a lot of time, you know, obviously you did with a thousand tweets on crowd control and things like that. Did people, for the most part, were people respectful or were people taking it to a point where you felt like it was very extreme, you know, th like making rude things at you or, or taking it personally at you? Um, I would say it was a bit of both. Um, Internally in the company, no one expects, um, everyone expects that you do a good job and that, you know, you put in the hours that are required, but um, I really tried to go above and beyond of, you know, what was expected for me and say like, okay, you know, I'm actually doing this in my personal time. There, there were like nights that I would get like two hours of sleep and just keep my phone next to me and just respond to as many people as I could um, because 
I, I think that even though, you know, we, we really couldn't say much because we were figuring out exactly what we wanted to do and how we wanted to, um, to actually create the extended cuts so we didn't have a lot of information. Um, it was important that we kept those lines of communication open. Um, and I think that a lot of people understood that it's always, it's always the case where people who are happy um, aren't going to go out of their way to, um, you know, pester people about how happy they are. They're just going to be happy and, you know, they'll say something and then they'll, you know, go on being happy. So um, even though, you know, the, my channel and um, our official Bioware channels had more unhappy people than happy people, um, I knew that it was because, you know, those are the people that aren't getting what they need. The people who were getting what they needed kind of walked away and they were like, okay, that's that's all I needed. That's always um, the case. <laughs> so I know. So I mean I didn't take it personally because um I think most people, even the people who start acting kind of like jerks, I think they're just people who are having a really bad day. Um, and, you know, as soon as you call them out on that or as soon as you provide them with, with what it is that they're looking for, they'll usually say, hey, I'm, you know, I got really heated. I'm sorry about that. Um, there is like the small percentage that just have absolutely no social graces or, or self-awareness or they really just don't consider what they're doing as, you know, poor behavior. Mm -hmm. And those are unfortunately the people that, you know, at some point as a community manager and as a person who is online, you just have to say, okay, well, you can't please everyone. And if you try to please everyone, you're just going to burn yourself out. So I'm really sorry, but I, I can't, I can't do anything for you. And um, if they keep, you know, pestering you, that's when the block button comes in handy. I think I block like honestly like maybe 35 people ever that's not much so, yeah no. oh. well okay excellent let's move a little bit to hold the line and kind of talk about it from that perspective as well uh krista or victoria whoever wants to go first uh tell a little bit about what you hope to accomplish with the retake mass effect uh movement and hold the line and uh i guess the general um guidelines on the manner in which you want to do that I've, uh, I've actually been really busy at work, so Victoria <laughs> might want to take this one. <laughs> While you were there at the time, um, I think, I mean, for me personally, the start of the movement started across various social channels, and uh, it was just about, I don't know, and I, I didn't, at first I really didn't think there would be any change made, and I just, I don't know, I wanted to make my voice heard. Um, and then as we got into hold the line and kind of developed this ideology that um, a lot of us kind of agreed on this um, civility and positivity and constructiveness and the kind of main aim of hold the line is to um, engage in dialogue and to request that um, developers or their representatives engage in dialogue with us so that we can work together because there's only so much so many surveys you can fill in or um, that sort of thing I think before you wonder if it's a one-sided conversation and also um, some people some people really don't know how to behave on the internet and everybody <laughs> has their moments I, I mean you know we're all funny on the internet sometimes but um, some people some people just kind of ruin it for the rest of us and hold the line just isn't up for that um, we want to be able to talk back and forth. So it's not just about proving that gamers have a voice, it's that proving gamers can hold a discussion, hold a conversation, and um, hopefully um, we've achieved starting a dialogue uh, with Bioware, and uh, I think hopefully that dialogue will expand and continue um, much much more beyond complaining about a game whose ending people didn't like. Now, I'm not saying it's not kind of a worthy thing to offer feedback for, I'm just saying that um, the kind of setup we've got here is a really good one and there are so many positive and intelligent people that um, believe in the tone of uh, civility and dialogue um, that I think we will really go somewhere and uh, I think that's why so many people have settled into HDL whereas uh, the retake movement has kind of found its um, it's found its conclusion now whether, whether it's the conclusion people wanted I don't think retake mass effect goes any further now don't lynch me. <laughs> That's one of my questions I will have. You can expound on in a, little, in a second here. Uh, I'm going to ask Krista, being a, a, 
a member of the forums on HDL, I kind of know some of the answers to this, but what are the ways that you've responded 